bikes over here as well. What's up? How are you? here in Texas well I can't blame them for coming out it's perfect weather it's in the 70s bright and sunny makes me wonder why the heck do I live in filthy Cleveland look at this stuff it's amazing we are walking inside the Dallas International Motorcycle Show and look what we have here it's full of people we saw all the people outside that rode their motorcycles to this fantastic event as I would if I lived out here to take advantage of the 70 degree temperatures and clear skies. We're gonna start out with Suzuki. We've got the M109, or is this the, yeah, the M109R, also known as the Boulevard. Beautiful, huge bike. I've always liked this bike as a cruiser style motorcycle. I remember when it first came out many years ago. Super nice bike. I know a lot of good folks that have this bike. And we see it's in a variety of colors. So I definitely want to check out one of my favorite bikes, the Suzuki Hayabusa. And there it is, in a beautiful color. Looking great. This is a 2019 model here in the US. And ever since I made my video about the Suzuki being uh, taken out of production, I've done further research and found out that it might not be going out of production in the United States. It's not true. It's not true? Here, we heard it from an official. So there's going to be a 2020 Busa? It's not true. What you're, what, what's running around is not true. Okay. All right, you heard it. Not true. The Suzuki Hayabusa is not going anywhere. Maybe I'll be able to run into someone that's uh, more official to give me some insight on that. But as far as this model goes, it looks great. Love the red wheels. Look like they're... Uh, powder coated not painted that's pretty outstanding love the rear I always love the rear hump the rear passenger seat cow on the Busa I always thought it looked great has a very nice design to it now in my opinion all they need to do is upgrade or update just a few minor touches you know the instrument cluster let's throw some TFT in there the headlights Let's sprinkle in a little LED light emitting diode. And, um, you know, let's do something with these big blocks for mirrors. You know, kind of make them into a nice design. You know, like some of the other motorcycles. You know, few, few things. And the bike would be mint. All right, next to it, we have a Jixer, all white Jixer, badging. And the logo is pretty much covered up. Um, not sure what size this one is. This is the Jixer 600. That is a very interesting color scheme to kind of white it out. Even the wheels are white, which is going to be horrendous to try to keep clean. But even that bike's super nice. And this one's priced right at $11,399. Jixer 600. Where is its bigger brothers, the Jixer 750? They still make that? They do. Here it is. The Jixer 750. Now this is nice. I sort of like prefer this one over the 600 that's all whited out because on this you can see the logos, Suzuki and everything else. I even like the red striping on the wheels. And it's bigger, brother. Uh, the Jixer 1000's around here somewhere. This is, a, this is a 150. This is nice. Pretty decent beginner bike, I guess. Track bike. It's got the uh, Tri-State Racing braking system on it. Looks great. The Big Bad 1000, right there. Looking great. New color scheme for 2019. Love the gold forks. Even the gold axle nut up there. TFT gauges. They're not uh, super colorful, 
but they are nice. Can't go wrong with that color scheme at all. We've got, it looks like a MotoGP or World Superbike spec race bike right here with huge winglets. You, talk, you guys want to talk about the winglets on the Ducati V4? Look at these winglets. Huge. But I love looking at these race spec motorcycles because you can see everything that the racing teams go through to modify these amazing bikes. And they, they are really spectacular. Looks like a freaking carbon fiber seat for Pete's sake. Extended fuel tank, I like that. We're using that on our R1M New Bike Build Series Season 4 bike. So that's going to be outstanding. I think that turned out great. <laughs> Just my two cents. So they like the Indian motorcycles. Do you? Something we didn't touch on at the New York City Motorcycle Show. These awesome Indian motorcycles with the Akrapovich exhaust. They look really nice. Really nice. They've got TFT gauges. Really nice. So let's uh, take a seat here. It's comfortable. Comfortable riding position. Black levers. That must be the trend right now to do that on these bikes. Tinted brake reservoirs, also nice. Look at 1200. Super nice. LED headlights. One of the nice things about the FTR 1200 is Really nice Indian motorcycles here on display at the Dallas Motorcycle Show. They pretty much have the best booth right at the front door at this motorcycle show. Lots of carbon fiber. Lovely TFT display. Seat here a long way from the filthy streets of Cleveland. What's buddy. up, buddy? Yo, How are you? Oh, How's it going? Checking out the old ride? Yeah, man. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was going to get the new one, but I'm going to keep my 16, stretch it, and make it a drag nice. strip there bike. You go. Cool. Yeah. So what, the, uh, do you, what do you ride, man? I got the Panigale uh, V4. You have yes. a V4? Nice! Yeah. Did you ride it today? Please I say did. yes. Yeah, it's in the parking lot. Awesome. So this man has a V4S, amazing bike. What, uh, did you put an exhaust on it yet? No. Okay. It was a long enough stretch to go from the standard to the S. So. <laughs> yeah, one if day. you were to get an exhaust, which one did you do you favor? I like the Termi, man. The Termi's pretty sick. My good buddy Manny from Moto Million would love you for saying yeah, that. Nice. <laughs> so you're a big supporter. You guys are all supporters of the 650E YouTube channel. How do you feel about me going in and doing supercars and stuff? Hey, I'd be down with it, man. Okay, be down with it? Cool, thumbs up, thumbs up, three thumbs up. Awesome. Thumbs up. I love that. Good meeting you, Big D. Hey, good meeting you too, bro. Pleasure. Yeah. All right. Do you mind if I can take a picture? Yes, you can take a picture with me. Absolutely. I'll take a picture of us too. Oh, okay. There we go. It's me and my good buddy. What's your name? Alan. Alan, my good buddy Alan. Oh, look, this is a cool custom bike. I love the paint on this. Let me know in the comments what you think about this custom motorcycle. I love the blend of a uh, <laughs> colorful seat up against sort of a monotone paint. Huge front wheel. But the reason I came over here was for the wheelie machine. You see back there. These guys are gonna be wheelie pros very soon. So instead of Jason Britton doing a stunt show, we've got amateurs jumping on these bikes doing their own stunt show. Pretty cool. What's up? Yeah, how are you? Let me shake your hand and you're, you're wow. on the vlog now. What's hey, up? what's up? What's your name? Andrew. Andrew, pleasure's mine. What's your name, big guy? Brandon. Brandon? Yeah. There he is. How are you guys doing? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Hey, he's got a YouTube channel. Oh, he does? What's your YouTube channel? Uh, Brandon John Vlogs. There you go. Subscribe. Subscribe today.
young Hondas in the house here at the Motorcycle Show. We have the beautiful CBR 600 Double R. Still around, thank goodness. So 600s are not dead, that's good to see. Paint on these Hondas have always been top notch. I'm not sure if they use Acura paint, but their paint has always been really nice. Bright, brilliant. Looks nice, the front of this sucker looks good. Looks nice next to its big brother, the CBR 1000 RRSP. Gorgeous bike with its Ooleans. Suspension, beautiful gold anodized wheels. And actually, for a stock exhaust, this one's not too bad. That's a pretty cool touch. Yeah, the CBR 1000 RRSP, very nice bike. Not really priced all that high and aggressive. Really cool details on the motorcycle. TFT full color gauges. Super nice. They've got some nice bikes out here. This is a this is the CBR 1000 Double R, and the base model doesn't look all that bad compared to the SP. You know, love the mirrors. This is what I was talked about for mirrors on a motorcycle. Nice design to them. It flows with the bike very well doesn't just look like a big block of plastic that was thrown on the motorcycle as an afterthought. But I will say I do prefer the frame with this exposed aluminum on the SP over the black frame on the base model. The CBR 300. <laughs> this is actually an R. Very nice bike. I love how the brands are making, you know, you thought the 600s were dead, but they've even uh, stepped it down and they have an R3, this 300 here, Kawasaki has a 400. So they're taking the small bike segment pretty seriously and I like that. Of course, we've got the new Grom next to it in a very cool light baby blue color. And there's that bad monkey, the Honda monkey. <laughs> that thing is pretty cool, man. I can't wait to actually take one of these for a ride when Sills gets more in stock. They can't, they just can't stock these things. They're really selling very well for Honda. That bad monkey. Look who just walked in the door. We got my good buddy, Outspoken Tiger. I know you like this HP4 race, Tiger. Track only though, you can't use it for your street smackdowns. <laughs> but the carbon fiber frame and the carbon fiber wheels, I mean, this is really specked out for a guy like you. You could slay a lot of people on that bike. It's outside my price range, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who wants to see a tech air go off? Woo! All right, all right. Yeah. Um, going to give you some brief information. We have Ebe here, thankfully, uh, our model for the day. The race system has two deployments. So if you are in a crash and have a low side, it'll deploy. You'll have the ability to run to your bike, pick it up, continue racing, and have the ability of the second set of security to continue racing. The street system utilizes both of the argon canister charges at one time for a 25 millisecond deployment. And that's for if you're sitting at a red light and you get rear-ended, within 25 milliseconds, you have the ability to be covered before your body even hits the back of the motorcycle. There's an accelerometer in each shoulder and an accelerometer in the back hump, as well as a gyroscope in the back hump. So all four sensors are actively running data and every two milliseconds, they're, they're looking for an upset in the system, like a shoulder tuck and a low side, and it'll deploy before you even hit the ground. Who wants to see this thing go off? Yeah? All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna have Eve walk around here, and you guys can actually see the coverage, you actually feel the coverage of his back, and around his shoulders, and around his vital organs. So the whole system gets about two inches thick, and it stays rock solid for five whole seconds. Um, after the five whole seconds. The Kawasaki's are here. 
great replica of Jonathan Ray's bike here on display for folks to see just how intricate these pure race bikes are with all of their parts and accessories. They're very different from the bikes that we ride on the filthy streets, but in some regards, they're still similar. There's that big bad ZX14R. Looking nice. This bike isn't going anywhere for sure. And neither is the Busa, by the way. They're still going to sell and market that motorcycle in the United States because these big bikes, people love them. And I can see why. Super comfortable, really fast, reliable motorcycles, naturally aspirated. So this is a bike that wasn't at the New York City Motorcycle Show. BMW decided to bring out their second color offering for the all new 2020 S1000RR. This is beautiful red. And so now we can see, since Ducati's not here at the show, I can talk a little bit about how this bike compares to the V4R. I'm going to collect both of these motorcycles. I'll bet the BMW is going to be in the beautiful Motorsports M package color. But this red bike would sit very nicely next to the red Ducati V4R. Both bikes are amazing. This one does not have the awesome winglets that are on the V4R. Um, but the front end is very nice on both bikes. LED headlights on this one. LED headlights on the V4R as well very nice menacing looking front end on both bikes just can't wait to put them both on the dyno both uh, will be done in stock form and after modifications so we can get some true horsepower numbers from these motorcycles as they both claim to have close to 200 horsepower at the crank we'll see what that translates to at the wheel it's going to be a great year for comparison videos on the two bikes. The all new BMW S1000 RR versus the Ducati V4R. with John Casey racing heads, all aluminum. Nice. Look at that, I see the, I see the fluid in there, that's, man. That's the gas tank in no there. No way. That's the gas gauge. This is gorgeous. She's all 6061 aircraft grade aluminum. We start out with a thousand pound block of aluminum. Work it down, this bike only weighs 530 pounds. Wow. The engine puts out 145 horsepower, 160 foot pounds of torque. This is gorgeous, man. Are these hand built? They're all hand built. We built three or four at a time. They retail for $125,000. Wow, what type of suspension's on this, man? That's a race tech suspension in mm -hmm. front and rear. Wow. And then if you watch that suspension, you'll see how it works. <laughs> that is outstanding, brother. Carbon fiber wheels, all matte carbon. carbon. Fiber, BST wheels, BST. BST wheels on front and back. The other carbon fiber is also manufactured by BST. Wow. I like the fact that it's chain driven. A lot of these yes, bikes you see, they're like... Uh, yeah, belt driven. Yeah. Yes, sir. They're, this is all, all our bikes are chain driven. They have a belt primary. Mm -hmm. And um, I've ridden this bike in particular 25,000 miles in the last 18 months. I'm my own test rider. It's a, <laughs> it's a perk of the job. Wow. Gauges are really nice too. Not a huge fan of those style mirrors, but right. for what this bike is, it's, it's functional. You you gotta yeah. have something you can see. I mean, mm -hmm. they are small, oh, but they work. This is beautiful, brother. How many of these will you make? We've built 31 of these so far. We'll build another 30 this year. Wow. After this one, we're gonna come out with another Hellcat, like the one you see on the end down there. Mm -hmm. We also built the P120, like it's up on this top screen right there. Super nice. Where are you based out of? I'm guessing Texas with the hat Birmingham, and everything. Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, really? Okay. Birmingham, Alabama. Dude, I have to come and visit you. I go to Birmingham all the time. I ride at the Barber Motorcycle Track. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I've got to come and visit you. Absolutely. Do you uh, you have a shop? I'm guessing we have, we have a shop. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have a real pretty shop. It's a it's a utilitarian shop. That's okay because the end result That's is right. really pretty. That's right. Jeez, I am absolutely loving 
that fuel tank. As you can see through. This is gorgeous. You know what this reminds me of? And you, you've probably heard this before. Your bikes sort of remind me of the Keanu Reeves Arch motorcycles. Yes, have I you know. heard that before? Yes. yes, I have. But some of the guys that are involved with Arch have, have sold bikes for us in the past, so uh -huh. they know the bike well. Yeah. So when it wasn't, didn't surprise me that they did CNC and carbon fiber yes. when they come up with their bike. But nobody's doing this, man. This no, is the sir. first time I've ever That's saw right. that. That's right. Well, thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you. So we just spoke to my good buddy Ernest from Confederate Motorcycles. I never knew this company existed. They're back here in the corner of the motorcycle show. So glad that I found them here on day two because their bikes are absolutely amazing. And I'm definitely gonna spend more time with Ernest going over his beautiful machines. And I honestly wanna collect one of these motorcycles because they're just that amazing. Never re really been into the segment that these bikes are in, but uh, I'm just so excited. I can't really think. These bikes are beautiful. Ernest is a super cool dude. Really nice to talk to. Super approachable. Gives me a lot of information about these amazing bikes. This is pretty much the highlight of the Dallas Motorcycle Show, in my opinion. The Confederate Motorcycles. Stay tuned for more videos of these bikes. I'm going to go out to Ernest's ranch and just spend a whole day talking to him. We're going to go over all these bikes. And hopefully, if I play my cards right, I'm going to collect one. Probably the one that he's uh, talking to folks about right now. So stay tuned. What? What the heck was that? It leaves and looks around the corner. Wow. That's pretty slick. That is. I wish I could start her up for you. <laughs> okay. You'd be pretty impressed with this. I bet. It is. I didn't know it did that. That's kind of like a deal, deal maker for me. Jeez. Yes, sir. That's the fuel tank up under the seat right there. Gorgeous machines. That's going to wrap it up for me. Day two at the Dallas International Motorcycle Show. Certainly one of the highlights of my trip here was the Confederate motorcycles and how amazing those cruiser, super high-tech bikes really are. But the turnout here wasn't all that great. I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but still, I think that people enjoyed themselves and got to see a lot of amazing motorcycles. Hey, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap the bell so you can be notified when I upload new content. Time for me to hit the airport here and get back home, but stay tuned for more content. Much more amazing videos are coming up to the 650E YouTube channel really soon. Winter has just begun, but hopefully it'll be over soon. We can look forward to collecting the S1000 RR M Sport and the Ducati V4R. Start putting those bikes on the dyno, put them on the weight scales, put them on the filthy streets track, see what the heck they're going to do. All right, stay tuned for more videos, guys. Thanks for viewing so much. We'll catch you next time on the 650E YouTube channel.